Well, hello everyone. Merry Christmas. It's uh, Christmas time, 2019, and uh, I haven't shot a video for probably about a month or better now. And uh, I thought, well, I'm home recovering from a little bout with the flu, and I'm feeling better, and uh, I've been getting quite a bit of rain here, so I've been stuck indoors. So, today I thought I would talk a little bit about uh, traditional pocket knives, which I, I think are making a, a comeback. These are the pocket knives that our grandfathers and our fathers carried uh, for many years. And uh, I think they kind of went by the wayside when the tactical folders became uh, popular. I know I certainly forgot about these patterns and I started just exclusively carrying tactical folders and I don't discount them completely. I still like carrying uh, large tactical folders. They're very useful especially for large carving tasks. Um, but they can be a little bit unwieldy and um, these little little uh, folders, these little slip joints uh, have a niche uh, in that they can be carried in a pocket, uh, quickly retrieved, uh, used to make a, um, a quick cut. Uh, some of them are suitable for carving tasks, others are a little too fine. Um, but uh, now I have a couple that I've had for years. This one is not one of them. This is a fairly recent purchase. But uh, this is one that I bought back in the 1980s. Now when I was a kid, I had a Camp King. I bought it in the uh, early 70s from a tackle shop. And a Camp King is kind of a scout knife. I was never a Boy Scout, but uh, I did like having a pocket knife for outdoor adventuring. And uh, at some point I did have a Case Jack knife. And I, I don't know what happened to that. I think the Camp King, I probably snapped the blade or did something with it. I, I have a vague recollection of it having a, a mishap. You know, and that's the, what happens with a lot of those pocket knives where, you know, kids had them and they just didn't care for them properly, didn't know how to care for them properly. And so there were mishaps. But uh, this is a Barlow pattern. This uh, dates to the 1600s. Um, it was introduced in England and it's kind of identified by this long handle and it has a, a bolster, a metal reinforcing bolster up here. Uh, this one is uh, Diamond Edge. Uh, it says Barlow. <laughs> I scratched my name in it with a uh, electric pencil when I was a kid. Well, I wasn't a kid. I was well in my 20s, but uh, when I was younger. Now, it has a, a clip blade. And it's got a patina on it from age and use. Uh, and it's still quite sharp. Um, I don't carry it too much out of sentimentality. And then it has a little pen blade. The little pen blade is useful for small tasks. These are just a really handy little knife. Um, you know, if you're in camp and you just want to open a, you know, maybe a, a mountain house meal to cook it, this is handy. Um, some of these have a half stop, this does not. This was very inexpensive in its day. Um, the maker is, let's see here, it is Imperial, Providence, Rhode Island. So I don't know if, that'll, if that can be seen, but uh, yeah, real American made. Just don't see that anymore, which is a pity. And then somewhere down the road I picked up this uh, frost cutlery copperhead. I don't know where copperheads get their name. I kind of think because it looks a little bit like a snake slithering on the ground. See the horns right 
right here. It's got like horn, like a horned snake, a viper, and then you know it's buzzer, its tail up, up high. That's what it reminds me of. It just kind of looks like a snake. Um, two blades. One thing that's kind of cool about this is it has a half stop, so you it will, you know if you're trying to close it. You have a bit of a safety there. See, it, it stops about halfway, and then you can carefully lower it. So it has a nice big clip. One thing with knives like this, you got to have fingernails. <laughs> if you bite your nails, you're going to have problems. Let's see what the length is on this. So this is uh, roughly a, a little under three inches, the blade. About... Uh, two and uh, three quarters. You can see it's been sharpened quite a bit. And I'm a big believer if you're going to own knives, use them and sharpen them. Learn to sharpen. It's no good if it's dull and it's not safe if it's dull. Now it also has half stop again with a uh, kind of a large pin blade and this roughly goes two inches. And these are, I believe, German silver bolsters. It has a shield on it, which um, says Frost Cutlery. Um, 1972 to 2001 is what, what that shield says. So it's evidently a anniversary model Chattanooga Tennessee this is one of the things about these uh, knives is a lot of times they have very unique handle materials this one has uh, some kind of a dyed red bone and then it's has a rather fakey warm grove machined into it I doubt that that's real warm grove it's probably just been machined but these are nicely made and um, you know I think you could carry these into a lot of environments you know like to work to pair up an apple and not really cause a lot of alarm uh, unlike if you pull out a big tactical folder that could be a problem so then uh, a couple that I picked up recently is uh, some Shrades uh, Imperial Shrade apparently got a hold of the name of Imperial. This is a nice little uh, uh, trapper pattern. Very compact with uh, plastic scales. Very stiff. This was an anniversary model. Uh, 100th anniversary. Has a crown logo on it. Almost a, almost a California clip with the long long clip there. Feels very wonderful in the hand, very light, very easy to use. It's great for probably cutting up uh, apples and uh, maybe things in camp. And it has a kind of a spade blade. Again, I, I think you could do some light carving tasks with this, but not real heavy ones. Um, one pattern I'm kind of interested in is the um, muskrat, which is a two-bladed folding knife used by trappers. And I, I happened to ask uh, Tobias Gibson of Knife Chats what he thought. And I have a lot of respect for his opinion. He's very knowledgeable. And he said, well, it, it can perform a lot of skinning tasks and some light tasks, but I wouldn't tax it with heavy tasks. It's just not really set up for that. And if you haven't done so, um, visit his YouTube channel and it's, uh, I think it's uh, under Tobias Gibson or you could search at Knife Chats. Um, he has just a wealth of information on there and you'll do well to to uh, check it out. He covers just the wide spectrum of uh, knives from little traditionals like this all the way up through um, modern tactical ones and even some um, historic knives like uh, the pocket knives dur used during the world wars um, 
Air Force knives, things like that. A lot of wonderful videos, so check it out. So a little trapper here. And then I picked up this Congress. And uh, this is really interesting. It has kind of a bowed shape. And then it has a kind of a coping blade, which I think would be good for some light carving or whittling. It has a very large um, kind of a spay or not really a worn cliff, but uh, sheep's foot. Sheep's foot, I believe, is what this pattern, this blade is called. Got the Imperial, trying to get this etch where you, there we go, where you can see it. Imperial, and then they tang stamp it. Now these are probably certain, almost certainly made in China for um, the company that now has this. I think it changed hands. I think Taylor Brands had it, and now I think it's another company. Um, Imperial Shrade. Another big spay or a big uh, sheep foot style blade. I, I've done some carving with this, uh, tri sticks and like that. One thing about these knives is uh, you can break the springs. You, you really should only open one uh, blade at a time. Don't open all the blades, it's injurious to them. Uh, these blades share the spring and so if you open two of them at the same time you're going to tax that spring and it could snap so um, you don't want to do that 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 uh, tension is what keeps this knife safe when you're using it so it won't close so easily so you want to preserve that and then I have another knife that uh, my wife picked up for me last year at Christmas and I did a video on this and I'm, you may have seen it. This is the um, Rough Rider uh, back, Backwoods Bushcrafter and this is a trapper pattern and it has this um, kind of a sawed bone handle that's uh, probably been dyed. It has a nice shield it says Rough Rider, always ready. Can you see that? Nice bolsters. These are copper. And they're pinched. This is what they call a pinched bolster when it has this little indent. Uh, nice work. You know, the Chinese people do a nice job on these. You get these through Smoky Mountain Knife Works, smkw.com. They're very reasonable. Um, most of these uh, Rough Rider knives are anywhere from $15 to $20, $25, and I, I think they're just wonderful quality. Um, this has two nail nicks. See, it has that half, stock, half stop position for safety. A very long clip. Again, that trapper feels really nice in the hand. The weight's back here and it feels very lively, very controllable if you're using it. Very fine, very fine blade. You'd have to be careful with this so you don't snap it uh, if you bend it. The steel that they, the Chinese I believe make a lot of these knives out of is in the 440 series. Um, let's see here, yeah, four, 440 razor sharp steel okay uh, it was quite sharp but it is razor sharp since I sharpened it up on my stones two nail nail nicks or nail pulls and they're serrated I think they call these a match strike pull but I, I doubt anybody's ever struck a match in one I doubt that and then the opposite side you got a big spay two nail nicks again Good size knife. This would be really easy to you know, prep your apple or whatever you wanted to do with it. You slice some bread or look at that width of that knife. You could spread butter and camp on your toast or 
meal or something. So just um, some traditional knives and if you're looking for something for a Christmas gift for some family member I don't think you can go wrong with picking one of these traditional pattern knives for them. These are very nostalgic and would almost certainly bring back memories of uh, times past with a grandfather or a, a dad and uh, they're just fun. They're just fun to carry and they're very comfortable in the pocket. And actually I make a lot of my own little necker sheaves with a little piece of paracord and a lot of times this is just simply how I I carry my knives when I'm in camp is just around my neck and then I can just reach down and access it real quickly it's right there in front of me uh, it's not weighing down my pants uh, so I like to make my own little little sheaths I'm no great leather smith by any means but uh, it's just fun. I do all my own leather crafting with a Swiss Army knife, a hammer and a nail, a needle and some kite thread. And that's all you need. <laughs> I'm, maybe someday I'll get into real leather crafting, but for now I'm too busy to go down that path. But uh, these are super cool little knives back in the day. So anyway, I just thought I'd drop in and say hello today and share that with you. And I hope your holidays go really great. And um, I hope you'll have a great New Year's too if I don't get back to you before then. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do coffee for New Year's. Okay, so we will chat with you later and you all have a great day. And, and again, Merry Christmas. Talk to you later.